Would you believe that Studio Series Bumblebee was such a bad toy that I had to take a week off to recover? No. Okay, well, maybe things in life just came up. But I do have the rest of the Studio Series first wave to go through, so we're going to get back to that with the next deluxe in the lineup, Ratchet, who is, well... It can only go up from Bumblebee, right? Like, surely it's not... Like, surely Bumblebee was not indicative of how the entire line is going to be. And we're going to get some real gems across this series. Like, right? Let's find out. Okay, so we have Ratchet in his movie 1 coloring and his movie 1 design. Which means he is an obnoxious shade of green. This is super bright to the point where it's kind of washing out on the camera. I even adjusted for that, and it's still flushing out a lot of the details, which is frustrating, but hey, that's just the, that's an accurate color. I can't really fault them on that. So the detailing itself is not quite what it was on Bumblebee, and I think there's a reason why that we will get to here in a bit. But just to run you through the shortcomings, we do have a very simplified version of his search and rescue decal here on the side. We have the wrong colors for the fire department and the search and rescue here, as well as a modification to the line. So a lot of this is done so that we can get it all on as few parts as possible, so we don't have to keep breaking it up like on this piece here, and so we can uh, only do it in one color. That said, there's also a bunch of little details, some silver and paneling that was left out, and the hubs aren't painted, so unlike Bumblebee, who seemed to just try to get every detail it could, Ratchet skips a lot of it. He starts to simplify things back down. That's not to say he's poorly done, though. He does have the floodlights up top done up in a nice metallic, kind of pale blue to look like the lights. The light bar done up in red, and we can see uh, the same light blue as well as some orange for the turn signals. So he also has good detailing up front, a little bit of gray here just so uh, the bumper stands out going to the back we also have the windows painted over you remember when I did the breakaway review and I kind of got annoyed because the windows were mismatched because the paint was super bright and the translucent was not well here we have dark blue metallic paint for the back windows and dark blue plastic translucent for the windshields. I'm not entirely sure why, because it's so dark, you really can't see through it, but it is there, so mm, why not? So, all that said, not a bad job recreating the vehicle. He's definitely had worse, but after Bumblebee, like, Bumblebee's shining moment was how good his vehicle mode looked. Also, and this might just be mine, but I'm having a lot of tab tolerance issues with this toy. I've got this little gap that was fine the first time I transformed it, but since then I have not been able to keep it closed. I've got little panels here that don't really like to stay pegged in so they aren't flush to the sides. And then we have little tabs here that hold these wheel sections that really, really do not want to stay closed. That's a mileage may vary thing, but it is not looking good for the QC quality of this series. Now for weaponizing, you do have a hole here as well as one here, and that gives you spots for his buzzsaw weapon to store. It looks absolutely ridiculous here, and you'd have to get really close. I, I assume that someone who gets chopped by this not only was just lucky enough to miss the bumper, but also did not get clipped by the rear view mirror. So that's... A lot of little, this is for very flat, very short enemies. Uh, but, you know, on the other hand, the, yeah, it would actually come off. The alternative is to go up here where your only enemy is low flying birds. So, yeah, the saw blade, it's going to look neat in robot mode, but it doesn't really do you very well here in, uh, here in the vehicle mode. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll go, we'll uh, start to get him transformed out. I might as well get these panels out of the way just so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. We got to get to the legs first. So for that, undo from this. And the legs peg in in a weird way during the transformation. Like it all seems to fit solid in there, but for the life of me, I'm not entirely sure how it does. And I will also admit, probably not how you transform it, but this is literally reversed from how I transform the toy. So we do have, uh, we do, you know, so this is just going by my experience. I will admit, I've not had the chance to play with these much in the last week. Things have been interesting in the house. So, 
I'm gonna go ahead and get the feet folded to the front here. Make sure the panels are closed up. That pretty much gives us our legs. So we can move on to bigger and better things, which I don't know necessarily if it's bigger or better, but it's what's coming up next. So I'm going to go ahead and get the arms out of the way. This whole section is going to hinge outward like so. That's, mm, so we have that. Rotate those around because there's going to be a lot of flipping going on here. There's a lot of uh, transformation cues taken from that deluxe that was done a few years ago, which is still a pretty good ratchet toy if you're not in the mood to spend 20 bucks on one of these. All right, so that whole section is going to rotate like that. And then the front section is going to also rotate all the way. So we got double rotations going on here. Very, in, very interesting transformation going on so far. So the arms, once again, have to rotate, get those flipped into place. Now the arms, now the shoulders assembly themselves, if the thing wouldn't come off, is again going to take a cue from the previous movie lines. If I can find where it pegs in. I'm gonna rotate that around like so. And then we're gonna make sure that that, ta that tab slot gets into that tab on the front of the shoulder. That's going to fill up our form up our shoulders nice and solid, like so. And give us a fairly accurate movie look. Do the same thing on this side. Hopefully do it a little bit more cleanly. You can hear his legs scratching against the floor the display. I do kind of apologize for that, especially to the headphone users right now. All right, I'm going to deal with this backpack here in a minute once we get all this connected, just so this isn't uh, flopping around or anything. All right, so in dealing with this, there's a lot of stuff that kind of folds up onto itself, kind of go as flush as possible. Yeah, and you're just going to have a you're just going to have junk to deal with in the back. I do apologize. Well, I don't have to apologize, nothing I did. That is going to give us our deluxe class movie series Ratchet in his robot mode at long last. Now, the main thing about the figure I do want to stress before we go any farther is, yeah, the Bumblebee we previously reviewed is done at a weird scale. It is intentionally small because the idea of this line is kind of like Marvel Legends, where some figures are larger, some are smaller. It's at the same price point, but they scale. So since it's my current metric, we're going to put Classics Bumblebee right there. And we do see Ratchet is quite a bit taller. So this is where I feel like the paint budget went for the vehicle mode. We lost some accuracy there, but we gained a much taller robot mode for Ratchet. And uh, yeah, some nicer scale because he does scale to Bumblebee a little bit closer than he does in the movie while still staying within Hasbro's strict price points. So... He does have that going for him for those who are uh, trying to apologize for Studio Series B being so small. This is why. So let's go over him now that we've got the size thing out of the way. And we will look at him in detail now. Ratchet looking very ratchety, which I guess uh, is pretty much to be expected. Yeah, the movie face is replicated fairly well. We did get a good look at this, uh, this face when he was sniffing pheromones. But enough of that. So, yeah, not too bad. You know, if you like the movie series aesthetic, yeah, this is going to do you well. Now, for the duration of this review, since we're in robot mode, um, there is one part that I'm going to go ahead and warn you about right now. Um, yeah, those are some uh, those are some awful ball joints. This uh, this is one of the floppier figures I have held in quite a long time. Now. There's the old future floor polish trick, which I don't carry the stuff because I don't run into this problem often enough to require it. This guy is definitely going to require it at some point because, man, those are some bad joints. So as I manipulate this toy and work with it, you apologize. I apologize because I'm going to have to deal with that. So detailing wise, he does have a let's see. Good thing I did it already. So, detailing-wise, he does have a lot more gray going on, biceps now exposed. We also have some inlaid gray in the thighs, thanks to some clever layering of plastic. So we have some inner detail, which is not too bad. It's more of a thing for movie toys to have. So, silver there on the shins, as well as the feet. 
that's your additional paint for this mode. And for the rest of that, um, yeah, the vehicle mode actually does a pretty good job of coming together on his torso to give you some extra color. I especially like how many lights are breaking up all of the black around his chest. He definitely he looks like he's out to rescue something. God, I don't think they ever used that in the movie. That would have been a really cool design touch. But yeah, he doesn't do too bad of a job. He's got little bits of silver everywhere. So he breaks up the, the green nicely, which you have to do on such a bright shade of green. And plenty of sculpted details, of course. Luckily, he's not too hollowed out for what I can see. He seems more solidly put together than Bumblebee. He's still relying on, you know, frictioned mushroom pegs and such. But yeah, nothing really egregious on him, construction-wise, except for... Yeah. I don't like how there really isn't anything to do with the top uh, bars of the vehicle mode. They just kind of hang off of his back. Luckily, they aren't too intrusive and they aren't too hard uh, to overlook when you're looking at the robot mode. But that is a little bit frustrating how everything else kind of cleans up pretty well. And then, yeah, he's just got bars hanging off of his butt. But, you know, what else are you going to do with them? You know, some of those movie toys turned him into big weapons that made no sense. It's just what you have to deal with. No one could figure him out. All right, so articulation rundown. How does he go? It goes like this. The head rotates left and right. At least that joint is nice and firm. We have a universal movement of sorts with the shoulder. It's ball jointed here on the back, right at his shoulder blade. So the arm goes back and forth, which is neat, and up and down and rotates. It's not true universal movement, so it is a little bit weird. You have a little bit of swivel there, but plenty more, 360 in the bicep itself. You have two elbow joints, one at the top of the shoulder and one at the actual elbow, so plenty of motion in the arm there. You don't have anything at the waist due to the transformation. You have those ball joints, if yours are tighter than mine anyway. You have a thigh swivel that is uh, fairly restricted. It's a little bit effective, but mm, could stand for some more. 90 degree knee, which is nice to have. You have a ball jointed ankle, so you have plenty of rocking in all directions there. This is the part where I would put him in some neat pose for the rest of the review, except his hips are so awful, I don't think I can do that. So instead, I'm going to mount his buzzsaw weapon, which you know, it's not as uh, thematic as some of the previous weapons he's had in these lines, but he did use it in the movie, and it is unique, and it is something that I could see him using for offense as well as rescue missions. And man, he really, really wants to... He really wants to do the splits on this on the smooth review surface. This is probably where I would have been better with the foam board because that has more friction to it. But that, my friends, is Studio Series Ratchet. He's got some issues, the same as Bumblebee. Um, the vehicle mode's fine, if not a little bit sparse on detailing. Robot mode looks really, really good. I would be happy with that if the joints and the hips weren't so frustrating to deal with. And I'd be happy to accept the vehicle mode for what it is if I didn't have so many tab problems and so many panels that wouldn't close up. Now, admittedly, all of that could just be my copy of the figure. But seeing how the how the problems on Bumblebee were so universal, it does make me worry that the same could be true of Ratchet. And it's not a good thing. The first two toys in this line that I opened up both have such egregious QC problems. I, I don't know. I'm... I am starting to doubt why this series was made. Because so far... These look, these are pretty underwhelming. This is not what a $20 figure should play like.